Hi, this is Dr. A with a Clean Camera Review video. We're going to look at the toxicology of acetaminophen and salicylates. All right, let's start with a salicylate. So um, that is aspirin, also known as acetyl salicylic acid. It is a common analgesic, antipyretic, and anti-inflammatory drug. You can buy it pretty much in any pharmacy. Uh, its function is to decrease <clears throat> thromboxane and prostaglandin formation through the inhibition of the cyclooxygenase enzyme and so therefore it lowers inflammation in uh, the prostaglandins and all that which cause pain, cause fever, and cause inflammation. Uh, the toxic effects are seen when ingested at high doses. So you can see a metabolic acidosis. It can possibly lead to death. Um, you can see hyperventilation also. If the patient has hyperventilation, they can then can develop respiratory alkalosis and other acid base disturbances. Uh, you get inhibition of the Krebs cycle, uh, which results in excess conversion of pyruvate to lactate. So then that's lactic acidosis and that's the metabolic acidosis. And you can also see excess ketone body formation. Also, um, again, trying to produce energy and stuff like that using ketosis. So um, with salicylate poisoning, you could get a respiratory alkalosis or you can get a metabolic acidosis or you can get one and then the other. And so these can be quite complex acid-based disturbances. The next one is acetaminophen. So uh, it is also known as N-acetyl-P-aminophenol, abbreviated APAP or paracetamol, which is para. Uh, if you travel in Europe and all that, you will see it as paracetamol. Uh, it is a commonly used analgesic drug. Uh, we actually don't know exactly how it works. Um, overdose is associated with severe hepatotoxicity. In uh, overdose, the accumulation of reactive intermediates, including free radicals um, in cells, result in a toxic effect, uh, which is necrosis of the liver. So it kills all the hepatocytes in the liver cells. Um, the consumption of a single dose, greater than seven grams in adults, and more than uh, a dose of or more than 150 milligrams per kilogram in a child, is considered potentially toxic to the liver in the kidneys due to the highly um, active metabolite, which is an acetyl p benzoquinone uh, I'm, I mean, I mean. So it's NAPQI. So NAPQI is what causes trouble in acetaminophen overdoses. So uh, acetaminophen overdose is one of the most common drug-related toxicities that is reported to poison centers. Um, it is the main cause of acute liver failure in the United States. Uh, the onset of the hepatocyte damage, though, is long. It takes three to five days after ingestion before you really start seeing the damage to the liver. And the initial symptoms of toxicity are vague. They're non-specific and not predictive of the hepatic da damage that is starting to happen. To quantitate it, um, there's a lot of immunoassays that is the most common available in pretty much any clinical lab, uh, but you can also do high-performance liquid chromatography, but that would be a reference lab test. So um, a little bit here um, with the dosage, so collection time is important. So if you know when a patient has taken the acetaminophen, then um, usually you want to get at least a four-hour level and maybe a 12-hour level. And if at four hours, um, the levels are, let's say, above about 100 um, microgram per mil of plasma, then you can have this pro probable hepatic toxicity. Uh, if it is below that, they should be able to clear it just fine. And then after 12 hours, it's more like 50, if I remember right. So above 50, you can see hepatic toxicity, but below 50, no hepatic toxicity. So again, um, knowing when the patient took uh, the uh, medicine is really important. So uh, a little bit on how acetaminophen is metabolized so you can understand why it's toxic. After a therapeutic dose, uh, acetaminophen is mostly converted to the pharmacologically inactive glucuronide and sulfate conjugates. So that's the bulk of it goes to either uh, glucuronide or sulfation. And um, there's a minor fraction that will be oxidized to a reactive metabolite, which is the NAPQI. And there should be, with a normal dose, should be only 5 to 10% of the, of the dose uh, ends up as NAPQI. 
So again, NAPQI is highly reactive and is primarily responsible for all the hepatotoxicity of acetaminophen. Detoxification of NAPQI occurs through its bonding with the sulfhydryl group of glutathione, which is a master antioxidant, and it uh, forms a um, tylenol glutathione complex or acetaminophen glutathione complex, which then is ultimately excreted in the urine as cysteine and mercuric acid conjugates. But at supertherapeutic doses, so doses above what is recommended uh, for acetaminophen, so anything more than four grams per day, uh, the sulfation pathways become saturated. While uh, the glucuronidation and oxidation increases, a smaller amount is excreted unchanged. After a highly toxic dose of acetaminophen, the glucuronidation gets saturated as well, and you get higher proportions of the drug that are eliminated unchanged, and a higher proportion gets oxidized to the NAPQI. So this time is more than 15% becoming NAPQI, which is what causes all the damage. So uh, the problem with NAPQI is that it eventually depletes the glutathione stores and then starts to form protein, protein adducts through the binding to cysteine groups on cellular proteins, and that's where it starts causing all the damage. NAPQI primarily targets mitochondrial proteins and ion channels, leading to the loss of energy production, ion misbalance, and cell death, and this is all in the hepatocytes. So therefore, an acetyl cysteine, or NAC, uh, was shown to be an effective antidote for acetamin overdoses in humans because it can replenish glutathione stores. So an acetyl cysteine is a precursor to glutathione, and uh, it's actually hard to give glutathione and it be properly absorbed, so it's better to give it all the building blocks, which is in, in acetyl cysteine, and then let the body convert that to glutathione. So then, uh, as the glutathione is replenished, scavengers, uh, it scavenges the reactive oxygen species in the mitochondria and enhances the full sulfation metabolic pathway, so it helps clear that toxic NAPQI. If uh, an acetylcysteine is administered within 8 to 10 hours after an acute overdose, it reduces the risk of hepatotoxicity to less than 5%. So that is just like first line of defense, that's what they do. Um, overall, an acetylcysteine prevents liver damage, renal failure, and death, and is the treatment of choice for uh, Tylenol overdose or for acetaminophen overdose. And that is it.